All right, hi everyone, you know the drill. Now that I've got this green screen set up, you know that I have recorded a main channel video and it would be put to waste if I didn't record a second channel video using this lovely setup. So how long does it take to learn Blender? That's a question I got on the main channel and I would actually be doing a disservice if I didn't point out exactly who asked a question. So let's take a look. Okay, here we go, Sunset Boulevardo. Curtis, could I ask you, dude, in your educated opinion, how long would you reckon on average for one to fully master Blender to a reputable high professional industry standard roughly? Some suggest that estimates for those artistic newbies, a bit like myself, lol, who are just starting out, who are albeit keen and eager to be fully acquainted with Blender, may vary between three to 10 years typically. Although whether this suggested approximation is accurate and comes under the assumption that one has a very good eye for detail, given a very good steady rate, grasp of being fully acquainted with every level of functionality, for every node within Blender is somewhat unclear due to other undetermined variables and hidden factors, etc. Could you confirm these estimates, Curtis, perhaps? If possible, even offer a more definitive, specific, and comprehensively learned workflow timeline or a block set duration. Thanks again. Okay, so um, it's impossible to say for like a specific timeline or even just a general estimate. I would say to keep it like a short answer before I get into it, because I know that people want kind of quick answers. Yeah, maybe three years for like competency. It's, oh God, it's, it depends so much. So intentional practice and intentional learning, intentionally exploring new skill sets and intentionally putting them to the test. If the intention is there, the speed is going to be faster, obviously. A lot of people, when they learn Blender, you know, they'll learn a few skill sets and then they'll try and apply them to their own projects. But of course, when they're doing that, they're getting the mileage in, which is important when learning skills. They might then start to neglect the experimentation. Those are like the two main factors that I tell people are important when learning skills, especially Blender. Experimentation and mileage. You want to try and get a good balance with those two things. So you're learning new skills all the time and you're putting them to the test all the time. And if you can find the perfect balance between that, you will maximize your speed of learning. But to what degree? you're kind of doing either of those things depends on what you want to do with Blender. So, uh, and it also depends on the motivation and personal ambition behind it. Some people go into Blender with their own personal projects in mind. So they will experiment enough to gain the skills that they think they need for it. And then they might stop experimenting and then just go fully on the mileage trying to apply it, trying to build their own projects. They usually fall short, but that's usually a good learning experience in teaching them, hey, here are my limits. Here's the limits of what I understand. Here's my skill limit. And this is when I experience frustration. Then they come back and learn more. So they go back to experimentation. Of course, this is all just like simplified conjecture. Nothing should be too categorical when thinking about subjective things like how people learn skills. But basically what I'm saying is it's like kind of managing different gears at once. And there's like an optimal point of having everything in balance where you can maximize your speed, but it's going to be different for like everyone. And we're not even considering like cognitive differences for how people learn in different ways. Now, when I learn new softwares and when I'm learning like new skills, the way I always tend to do it and the way it's always been with Blender was like, I would open it, fail at doing something, close it, open it, fail at doing something, close it, etc. For like months and months and months and years before finally picking up pace. The same thing applies to other softwares again, like recently doing more music learning. Like I've been using the same software to learn those skills for like the last five to 10 years, but the pace that I'm opening them and failing less and less is reduced over time. I started learning Blender with a focused attitude in 2016, but I've been using it for many years beforehand on like a range of other projects to a much less successful degree. 2016 was a turning point because that's where focused learning came into it. Specifically following tutorials to learn more about the software, taking part in challenges to specifically develop skills, especially sculpting skills during Sculpt January and things like that. Because of that focused learning, I would say I learned more in like half a year using Blender in 2016 than like I ever had like ever in any other artistic endeavor or any other software endeavor. I certainly wasn't great. I certainly wasn't a professional, but I was so much more competent, but definitely not a master and definitely not after a year. And I still don't think I'm a master. There's always so much more to learn. I don't think anyone ever like truly escapes the imposter syndrome that comes from learning software. I don't feel like an expert in Blender. You can look at my work in different departments and go, oh yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing. But like, there's so much about the software I don't know about. I've never touched the action editor. I like, I barely touch drivers. I don't do much in terms of animation. So like when thinking about the competence in terms of, okay, well, what's a professional understanding of Blender? Well, what skill sets do you need for the professional job? Are you able to achieve what that job wants you to do? Yes, then technically you're a professional, I guess. I don't believe there's like any upper limit or like a professional threshold line for artistic skills. It's so subjective. And in terms of like understanding the Blender software, it's changing all the time. So like a professional Blender user for what, like two version 2.6? Give them 3.1 now and are they still professional? Like, can they use it? They, they need to relearn a bunch of stuff. Artistic skills may transfer, yeah, but 
like, I don't know, it'd be a bumpy ride, you know? Now I'm being very difficult here because obviously I'm not giving a very straight answer. How long does it take to become like really competent with Blender? Yes, I would say three years for like a full competency on average. You can speed run that, you can speed run it all you like if you've got the ambition. But I think like a general constant user of Blender that's been experimenting with it in different projects, different fields, it's like, you know, trying tutorials, trying their own thing, experimentation and mileage, etc. Three years is like a good, like a good solid round number. I think. Now, obviously most of us, we've been doing it for way more than three years. But like I said, I started the focus learning in 2016. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So what, that's six years on from there. But all of that was focus learning because for the last few years, I'd say I've been doing YouTube. It hasn't been focused Blender learning. It's been like a hybrid of things. It's been working on a lot of different projects related to Blender, which has required learning in very specific fields, especially like Python related stuff. But it hasn't been focused general learning of Blender. So I guess at that point, we can imagine things like a tree branching off in different ways and people follow their own specific interests in different fields. Blender is so all encompassing that to be an expert at every possible field that you could use it for is just well, it's not impossible, but it's very rare. You know, people start to specialize in their fields of interest and it may not just be one field of interest. That's definitely not how I work. So yeah, it doesn't do it justice to give like just one time frame. but I would say, yeah, generally look at a few years for like a professional level of competency with the software. That does not mean a professional level of skill. Artistic skill is a like a whole other bag of worms and we can't put like a time on that. I've done a whole video on like the, the main channel talking about the 10,000 hour rule and how general and vague and useless it is. So maybe it might be worth going back and watching that if you're interested in some of my other opinions about it. But yeah, I guess just to like kind of conclude and summarize all of that, Blender is so wide and all-encompassing. It's a lifestyle for a lot of people. It would be strange to like confine the learning process of it down into like one specific time frame. Blender is love, Blender is life. It's like asking how long does it take to learn to live? Such questions cannot be answered by science. So yeah, I mean, maybe it's helpful, maybe it's, you know, useless, but as you said in the comment, like it's um, it's a difficult thing. I think if anyone gives you a very definitive answer for that, they have not done justice to cognitive differences between all different types of learners. They would be fooling themselves. But we'll say three years for the sake of it, just to give you something to hold on to. But you know, realistically, someone could understand perfectly how Blender works as a software within like one week if they really wanted to, if they found the right kind of educational content. But just understanding how it works doesn't mean being competent in using it. So, yeah. I'll leave it as vague as that and I can let people argue about it, you know, in the comments elsewhere, etc. You know, I'm not going to be the guy that puts a definitive time on it. I'll leave it to someone else for years. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.